Hi and welcome back. Today I'm out at my growing field and uh, checking on my trees and specifically looking at the trees that I'm uh, likely to or want to remove in spring. So what I plan to do is take a look at, uh, through the different trees and uh, evaluate whether they are the, the trunk is thickened up enough uh, or and, and scars have healed over enough and then uh, look at if any preparation um, is needed to the tree and uh, to do that and then as I'm doing that I'll also just explain why and what I'm doing. So the first example that I'll look at is this trident maple that was uh, grown from seed along with the others. It's been in the ground for a number of years now, although I can't tell you exactly how, how long. Um, but the tree was cut in late spring in the previous growing season and that is why we have all this new younger growth. Along with field growing goes the fact that you're going to have big cut scars from the big sacrificial growth, whether it be trunks or whatever branches that you're using. And this is, um, this, this is a large cut, um, probably made two seasons ago. It has already started to heal over, um, but it's, if it was in the ground, it's gonna probably take another, maybe two seasons to heal over. If it's gonna go into a pot, it's gonna take a lot longer. So I think, although the rest of the tree is about ready to to be um, uh, you know to to move to the next stage of development because of this large scar that's still yeah I think I'm probably going to leave it in the ground for another season another growing season just for this to callus over more um, and then also possibly to look at developing the uh, the apical area a little bit better too but let me show what uh, show that to you as well this would have been the trunk uh, that was uh, that continued from previous tr uh, trunk chops and um, as you can see now a lot of growth has come out of this uh, so this would have been cut in late spring of the previous growing season um, so you've got a lot of back budding and uh, but now this still needs to be handled so the best is going to be to select what of this growth uh, you want to keep and to develop or to continue the trunk line with. Um, you don't want to keep all of it um, because otherwise it's going to start creating a, a big fist, big, um, big growth in this area. So you do need to reduce all these shoots. But having all these shoots is what gives you options uh, to select from. The tree is obviously dormant now. So before it starts to grow in spring again, um, this will need to be thinned out. The shoots that I don't want will need to be removed. And then we can also, I can also carve this stump down uh, a little bit. You have the option to reduce this stump or the stub uh, that has started to, the sap has started to recede. So it's clear where the sap is still, where the, the live cambium still is. Uh, but it's really not necessary to do it just yet. Uh, you can just leave this for another growing season and allow the whatever the, the new trunk line is to develop a little bit more and then come back in and shape this cut better into whatever line that you've chosen. This is another trident that is a uh, candidate for lifting in spring and uh, so let's evaluate this one as well. This is the other side of the same tree that we looked at a second ago and as you can see there are no visible scars on the tree, well one or two smaller ones, but that's uh, nothing for a trident to heal over. So if this was the front then this tree is about ready to be lifted at the moment. The problem of course is that if this is going to be the front of the tree then this scar still needs to heal over but again for a trident maple uh, this could heal over in even in a pot in within a season uh, or two depending on how much sap flow is allowed above it uh, this tree will be lifted in spring um, when the buds start swelling on the tree uh, but in the in the meantime what we can do is just cut the the trunk a little bit shorter um, so that we don't waste any sap uh, and then also to prevent uh, the bleeding that tridents are or Chinese maples are predisposed to, to doing in spring. Um, obviously we will be chopping the roots uh, in, uh, when we collect it uh, quite considerably so that will reduce the amount of sap that's lost um, but by cutting it now we will there is enough there's a couple of months that will then 
uh, transpire between when the tree is lifted. So I'm just going to use a saw, a sharp saw, and uh, looking at the tree as a set of buds at this internode, and then there are a lot more buds in this area here. Uh, but to be safe, I'm going to cut. Uh, I'm going to cut the trunk line or this branch, uh, whatever you want to call it, in this point, and uh, and that will allow. So then I will definitely get uh, get buds growing out here. Um, but this will be shortened, I'm sure. So whether we use uh, one of these buds to create a whole new uh, trunk line um, from this point, uh, or we might actually, I might just graft, uh, approach graft. In, in, in here because because this is an interdote I'm never going to get anything growing out of this section between this point and this point. It's not really necessary to seal um, because the tree is dormant so sap is receding rather than pushing. So here we have another trident maple that has reached a thickness or girth of trunk that I'm happy with and so it's a candidate to be lifted in spring. There are a couple of uh, cut scars on it uh, but nothing so big as uh, would cause me to doubt whether they would heal over in a containerized environment. So this is a tree that I will be lifting in spring and um, there isn't really anything that needs to be reduced. I'll just cut a couple of these branches shorter with a pair of secateurs. So you might be wondering why I need to cut these thinner branches off. Um, the simple reason is that during the, the process of collecting, they're probably going to get broken off anyway. So I'd rather cut them down to a set of buds so that I know that I've got something that will start to bud in spring. Um, but that won't get entirely broken off. So I'm just going to use uh, secateurs to, to, to remove or to shorten those branches. The trunk of this trident is, I'm happy with the thickness that it's developed. It's got lots of character, uh, but this cut was made about, it was also only made last, uh, very late last spring and uh, as a result I've got back budding but there's no healing that's taken place yet so this is a fairly sizable scar and I think it would be uh, probably just better to leave the tree in for one more growing season um, select one of these shoots uh, before spring and uh, and then just allow that to develop um, a little bit more before the tree gets lifted because obviously once the tree is in a container uh, it, the growth drops dramatically and, and scars do take much longer to heal. So it's, it'd be better just to leave this one in the ground for another one or two seasons. Now I've got many of these Celtus chinensis in the ground and uh, although the trunks have developed really nicely and there's good branching, uh, these cuts that have been made or were made during the process of growing the trees uh, is just too big to heal over in a container so it's definitely going to be advisable to leave the, this tree and as well as the others in the ground for as long as it takes to almost entirely or entirely close these scars otherwise uh, you can accept or assume that they will never heal over in a pot. This is another one of the Celtus that has been in the ground for at least 15 years now and uh, as you can see, there's one big cut that is that is yielded over quite quite considerably, as a result of the large branching above it. Uh, but this side of the tree still has a long way to go because it was only recently cut. Um, so this tree is still going to be in the ground for a good few more years. And yeah, we have the last uh, tree that we'll look at today, and that's another trident maple. Um, it's been in the ground also for a good number of years now. It's quite a large tree, in fact. Uh, and um, there aren't any scars visible from the front of the tree that need to be healed over. So this one we can lift in spring. All right, so we're just going to cut this, um, leaving quite a shoulder on the... We're going to leave a shoulder over here so that there can be some uh, receding of the sap uh, without uh, impl impacting negatively on the branch or the trunk line that I want to keep. I'm going to show you an example. 
of a large cut that was uh, that resulted from a previous trunk chop and as you can see it's completely healed over so this is uh, you don't necessarily need to get it completely healed uh, before lifting the tree or, or considering uh, lifting the tree but um, it is advisable um, because it obviously depending on the species trident maples do uh, tend to callus very easily um, so they're a lot you can lift those a lot earlier um, and still heal the cuts in in the container um, but with other trees like Celtus chinensis and um, they don't heal very easily so it's advisable to keep them in the ground for as long as possible to heal the scars over almost entirely before considering lifting them out of the ground I want to summarize some of the considerations uh, to take into account when you are getting to the end of uh, field growing so uh, and determining which trees to remove from the ground so the most important criteria is is of course whether the trunk has reached a thickness that you uh, that you wanted uh, that you set out to achieve when you started field growing because of course that's the, re the main reason why you field grow trees um, so if assuming that the trunk is the thickness that you want then the next thing that you've got to look at is scarring because pursuant to achieving that uh, that that trunk you would have made several trunk chops and um, and so obviously there would be scars that were left as a result of that and so those scars ideally should be largely or completely healed uh, before you lift the tree because the scarring will take that much longer when the tree is in a container um, to heal over. Um, this is especially so of slow to heal, um, so trees that have a very thin cambium for instance um, take a long time to heal if they, if they ever do in fact, um, large, large scars. Um, and then the best time to lift the trees of course is going to be in early spring when you would do, uh, typically do your repotting. Um, but it's advisable to come before then uh, in, in autumn and, and that is the time that I'm doing this is very very late autumn early winter you could say um, and uh, just to cut the uh, any trunks uh, sh uh, shorter or branches that have developed uh, shorter uh, you don't have to cut them off entirely you can cut them off leaving a stub so that you do keep uh, buds that can can uh, sprout in in spring um, and i don't think it's entirely necessary to seal uh, then because the sap is receding and uh, so it allows time for uh, doing the work in late autumn allows time for the tree to just uh, partition off uh, that section that you've cut, the, the cut site, um, so that in spring uh, you will have less beading, uh, bleeding and also you won't have any wasted uh, sap um, uh, by pushing that would be pushed up into those sections that you would be removing anyway. And then of course you can just clean up uh, thinner branches uh, which would likely break off during the process of collecting, the, uh, digging the tree out of the ground. So for now this is all the work that is required on these trees that I've selected to remove in spring. Uh, we will then come back in, in around springtime and uh, dig the trees out and I will get that on, on video for you of course and, and post that. So thanks very much for watching and until next time if you haven't done so yet please do subscribe and uh, I'll catch you next Friday. Thank you, goodbye.